Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss the largest organ of the reticular endothelial system, and that will lead us into the system properly. But today we will discuss the spleen. But before we begin, please like, share, subscribe, and put on the notification to receive all our free lectures. For more information about our paid classes, please send an email to sonoeyesdiagnostics at gmail.com or you can always WhatsApp me at plus 234-9019-144-175 or you can visit our online store at sonoeyes.business.site. Attempt the quizzes at the end of the description and leave me a comment. Welcome back. The spleen is the largest organ of the reticular endothelial system that consists of an organized masses of encapsulated lymphatic tissue that are intimately uh, associated with blood sinuses and other vessels. The spleen is situated in the left hypochondria of the abdomen. It is an intraperitoneal organ apart from its island actually. The spleen is uh, completely surrounded by the peritoneum. Its smooth convex diaphragmatic surface is in wide relationship with the abdominal surface of the diaphragm. Its posterior and lateral aspect is protected by the ninth to twelfth rib. The anterior medial concave gastric surface is in relation with the body of the stomach. The inferior visceral and renal surfaces are in relation with the upper pole of the left kidney and the left adrenal gland. The anterior inferior aspect of the spleen is in close relation with the splenic flexure of the colon. The pancreatic tail stretches across its length to contact with the splenic hilum in that relationship. In the hilar region, the splenic blood vessels and the tail of the pancreas are the ultrasound landmark structures. Now, ligaments that are associated with the spleen will include the gastrosplenic ligament. Now, this um, the spleen here is connected to the um, greater curvature of the stomach by a peritoneal fold that is called gastrosplenic ligament. The splenorenal ligament is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the peritoneal fold and that forms that splenorenal ligament anchoring it on that side. The splenorenal ligament contains splenic vessels and pancreatic tail. The gastrosplenic and splenorenal ligaments and the hilum of the spleen forms the margin of the lesser sac. There are a wide range of spleen sizes. The intercostal scanning will provide the most reliable measurements of splenic dimensions. The measurements are often obtained as we will see. The length is obtained by measuring the largest distance in sagittal. Uh, whether you're measuring sagittal, parasagittal, or coronal plane. And that should be um, equal to or less than 11 centimeters. The thickness is measured from the hilum perpendicular to the medial concave surface and the lateral convex surface on the transverse scan or sagittal scan and should be about less than or equal to 5 cm. The width of the spleen is the greatest dimension that is perpendicular to the thickness of the transverse scan that should be um, less than or equal to 11 cm. Splenic weight may be calculated by these three dimensions uh, in the following formula. Uh, the formula is 0 0.43, which is a standard, 
a constant rather multiply by the length of the spleen multiply by the thickness of the spleen and multiply by the width of the spleen so the mean weight of the spleen is as follows for men the mean weight is 180 grams for women you should be measuring averagely 150 grams in splenomegaly the spleen will be measuring greater than or equal to 200 grams. The severity of splenomegaly depends on the size of the spleen. Mild to moderate splenomegaly will measure anywhere from um, greater than or equal to 11 cm by 5 cm by 11 cm, which will give you about greater than or equal to 200 grams to uh, 500 grams. Max splenomegaly will be anywhere from 500 grams to 1000 grams. And gross splenomegaly will be anything above 1000 grams. Let's look at the splenic structure. The spleen contains a network of lymphatic follicles called the white pulp. These are surrounded by vascular lakes filled with blood and that portion is called the red pulp. The red pulp is the reticuloendothelial component associated with phagocytic cells that lines the sinusoids. The white pulp is a part of the lymphatic system and it manufactures uh, lymphocytes in their germinal cells. The spleen functions thus. It has the hemo, rather hematopoietic function. Normally, this happens in the uh, fetal life, during the fetal life. There is the erythrocyte storage. The spleen stores small amount of blood which it liberates in an emergency. However, in human spleen, it is not as marked as in other species. Um, so, um, just for your notice, the immunological function of the spleen is the production of antibodies, lymphocytes, and plasma cells. The phagocytic functions include removal of old and pathological blood cells, immune complexes, and particular uh, particulate matter in the blood um, stream. It filters blood of debris and um, the principal organ to break down is actually a principal organ to break down worn out uh, red blood cells and form indirect bilirubin. There are variants in the anatomy of the spleen. 20 to 30 percent of all the postmortem examinations done demonstrate accessory spleen. Usually seen in the splenic hyla uh, region or in the region of the tail of the pancreas. Clinically, this is insignificant but may stimulate neoplasm or enlarge hyla lymph nodes. Uh, lymph nodes. Sonographically, Accessory spleens are round or oval. They are well-defined, well-encapsulated structures in the hilar region. The echogenicity level is almost identical or isoechoic to that of the spleen. Tectinium-99 sulfur colloid scanning, that's TSC, is useful to confirm an accessory spleen since the uptake of colloid will indicate that the mass has a phagocytic activity. But if it's not, then it's not an accessory spleen. Splenosis. After, splenect uh, after splenectomy, hypertrophy of a small <clears throat> splenic remnant may lead to recurrence of spleen and is called a born-again spleen. Size of the splenic nodule is usually less than 5 cm 
with uh, identical echogenicity of a normal spleen. A TSC scan can confirm splenic tissue. Remember, um, um, if it does take up the color, then it is splenic tissue. If it doesn't, then it may just be a neoplasm or something else. Wandering spleen. The spleen may be attached to the posterior abdominal wall by long pedicle of peritoneal fold that is arising from original splenorenal ligaments, which permits the movement of spleen into the abdomen and pelvis. Wandering spleen is supplied by splenic artery and drained by the splenic vein. Torsion of the spleen on its pedicle may cause severe pain and infarct, which usually is rare to uh, rare and also um, difficult to diagnose in some cases. Sonographic diagnosis of wandering spleen is considered whenever there is absent spleen uh, splenic echoes in its normal position, and there is the presence of a solid mass in the abdomen or uh, pelvis. So where you don't find the spleen where it ought to be and there is a mass similar in echogenicity that may just be a wandering spleen. However, the simplest way is to do the TSC scan to determine and identify whether what you are seeing is a wandering spleen or is a mass. There is the upside down spleen. The hilum is directly either towards the patient's head or lateral. In this case, in ultrasound, transverse scan will give the long axis scan and longitudinal scan will give the transverse axis scan. There's really no clinical significance to this um, reorientation. There is the wrap around uh, liver spleen. The left lobe of the liver may be exceptionally elongated and intervene between the diaphragm and the supra, the superior lateral aspect of the spleen overlying the spleen. The portion of the liver is less echogenic than the spleen and more, uh, um, and basically it may simulate a subcapsular uh, sub hematoma of fluid collection. Doppler can confirm the tissue enveloping the spleen is, a con is continuous with, with uh, the liver. When you do a Doppler, you can actually determine whether it's the liver wrapping the spleen or there is a pathology. There is also asplenia, which literally means absent spleen. Asplenia refers to uh, absence of normal spleen function and is associated with some serious infection risk, of course, because of the um, very basic function of the spleen. It may be congenital or it can be acquired. So congenital asplenia is rare and may be due to genetic disorder. For example, um, heterotaxy syndrome can be one of those. Heterotaxy syndrome is a disorder that results in certain organs forming in the opposite side of the body. For example, dextrocardia or situs inversus. Heterotaxy syndrome has been known to affect the development of the heart, the liver, lungs, intestine, and the spleen. For every one million babies born, four of them will have heterotaxy syndrome. Now, acquired asplenia occurs um, for several, several reasons. Following splenectomy due to splenic rupture from trauma or because of tumor. After splenectomy with the goal of interfering with the splenic function as a treatment for disease. So, that can happen, right? Example, idiopathic thrombocytopenia, purpura, thalassemia, spherocytosis, in which
displaying activity exacerbates the disease actually. Due to underlying disease that destroys the, the spleen, that will mean autosplenectomy. Example, um, sickle cell disease. Functional asplenia occurs when the splenic tissue is present but does not work well, like you have in sickle cell disease, polysplenia, such patients are managed as if they are asplenic. So, scanning techniques that can be used in, for the uh, scanning of, of the spleen, the long axis of the spleen lies roughly along the tenth rib. Patients should be scanned in the right lateral decubitus position, that is the left side up. And the tenth and eleventh intercostal space can be used as access to the spleen. Scan in the left coronal plane to achieve a long axis scan and be turning the transducer 90%, a short axis scan. 5 MHz sector or covalinear transducer may be used since the spleen is poorly attenuating structure that is located just behind the ribs. A modest inspiration will depress the diaphragm and the spleen and displaying inferiorly so they can be visualized. The lower ribs may be elevated by having the patient raise the left arm over the head. Just like this. Greater access may be achieved by inserting pillow between the waist and the table. Like you see in this, um, this scanning technique in this picture, and this is the ultrasound appearance in this uh, plane. Yeah, this is a transverse plane for ultrasound. You can also see um, transverse plane with uh, splenic nuclei as indicated by the arrow. You can see spleen that is wrapped by the left lobe of the liver. So sonographic appearance of normal spleen. Uh, the spleen has a homogeneous or uniform mid to low level echogenicity. The echogenicity is usually slightly greater than that of the adjacent normal liver. The echogenicity is higher than that of the renal parenchyma. The anteromedial margin is sharp and may have several well demarcated notches, about one to five well demarcated notches in it, which represents the remnants of the margin of several embryonic uh, nodules that fuse to form the adult spleen. Often, the echogenic um, septum may be seen within the homogeneous parenchyma, so it's not a pathology, it's just uh, normal anatomy. So, what are the indications for ultrasound and examination of the spleen? Indications will include um, left upper quadrant pain, history of pyrexia of unknown origin, history of an infectious disease such as TB, malaria, calaza, etc., et history of portal hypertension, liver cirrhosis, history of adenopathy, lymphoma, leukemia. History of abdominal trauma. Measurement of the spleen size could be an indication. Basically, your suspect is larger or smaller. Diagnosis of cyst, tumor, infection, abscesses, and calcification. Document documentation of changes in the volume of the spleen in patients with hematologic, infectious, or metabolic storage disease is an indication. Uh, of course, local interventions or FNAC. So in the next lecture, we'll begin to look at splenic pathology, especially the causes of splenomegaly. I want to thank you for taking time to look at this video. I'm sure you've learned something. Share it to others. And until the next time I come your way again, keep learning not yourself. Saying yes to 